do you balance keeping what's fantastic about your business in a way that you keep the same passion, key staff, message as well? Staff used to often say to me, oh go on June, build a nursery in Kidbrook or build a nursery in Bexley. And I used to say to them, yeah, if I start doing that, then, you know, you'll be worrying then about other things. You mark my words. And so when we did announce that we were going to do this and we had targeted certain parts of the city to do it so, there was real panic, but there was also delight. So some of them would say, okay, this is great. That means if we have more nurseries, there's more promotion opportunities for us. That means I can become a nursery manager. Because at LEAF we have a lot of apprentices and apprentices are really um, at the very beginning of their, their journeys. Then the old hands, which, you know, people who've worked for me for a long time, they'd say, ah, oh, June, but, you know, we're such a family. And, you know, we know each other and we like to hang out together and we go on outings together and we have parties and it's great to catch up. How would that happen if we're really, really big? So we had to think about ways of managing both those things, the opportunity for staff, the scariness for staff, but the moral duty to actually have more nurseries to provide more places for more children. So what we thought about is, why did we want to do this? What was the strategy behind that? And how did we get everybody to know that from the cleaner to the most senior member of staff? What would make that exciting for them and that they'd want to buy into it? So what were the best methods that staff in, in our organisation and in a social business would believe you? Because you could be suing balloons and, you know, pens and, you know, nice glossy brochures. And then they'd say, why are we spending money on all of this when we could be buying another place for a poor child? So you had to kind of balance those things out as well. So I told them they could ring me, which they did. Text me, which they did. And so you get a, get a text late at night saying, watch this program on telly. It's all about growing or it's about something going wrong. Look what's happened to Barclays Bank about their culture. Tesco's are all going down the pan, June. Are we going to go down the pan like them if, you know, if we don't get this right? Will we ever see you? you know, will you ever come and visit us? Um, will you know the name of my, my staff? Will you know the name of my children? I tend to like to know the names of their children and what's happening in their lives for them. That's important to me. Plus, there was anxieties that if they couldn't keep up with the new way of doing things, we might sack them. But in fact, those kind of language was quite important for us. So we, we, d we developed something called the EMTTs. So always two of us went out and had tea and we brought cakes and um, cakes go down very well with a highly female population um, and chocolate and just relax and just say anyone can come. I don't care who comes, just come and ask any questions. For the most part, the questions are really quite sensible. You know, how will we do it? Can we afford it? Will we take a risk? You know, the economic situation isn't great. And then I'd ask them. The best thing to do is say, well, what do you want to do? They wanted more picnics. They wanted more events. They wanted a um, simple message that they could sell to people so that they understood. So, you know, you talk about that in marketing as the kind of elevator test. You know, if you had two minutes to describe what you do, why you do it, and how you should do it, how would you do that? So they liked some of that. They liked being called marketing champions. We gave them presentations that would help them to be the voice of LEAF. We also got, you know, some kind of bigwig types, sometimes politicians, some people that they kind of valued, to go in and do visits. And they really liked that because it made them show off why it's important. For the most part though, if you show a warmth and a positive reason for growth, so you're not growing because you want to have, you know, be an empire builder or because you want to have more money to give to more shareholders, then it's an easier message to sell. So if you're saying to people, I'm growing because we want more children to have a better experience and you guys are the people who can do it because you are good at this and we are an award-winning organisation so they know that, then in some ways you give them a personal reason. It's almost like a vocation to want to do more growing, be great and be bigger and be more powerful and give a more powerful message.